Good afternoon YouTube, we're back on a new camera. So previously I had the EOS R, I don't know how to use cameras by the way, I don't know what the hell I'm doing with this other than I just hit record. I had the EOS R on this big lens that TM Cycle sold me, big microphone, just nah, so big man, it was hefty, it was like the size of my air fryer, okay, and it did not make me comfortable, I did not enjoy using it, um, I am not, you know, I'm not a cinematographer, um, I'm not even a vlogger really, so I've got myself a new little setup upon the recommendation of TM Cycles and Luke, so I've got myself the little Canon EOS M6 Mark II, I'm trying to read it, much, much smaller, uh, I wish I could show you, but it's, it's no sort of wider than the iPhone, it's obviously thicker, but class, and, and I've got a much smaller lens, so I'm hoping what that means is that I'll do this more often, because what I find is that actually getting a video friends is great when you're doing things, but when I just want to vlog, and I just want to keep you up, up to date, and I want to give you my, you know, my raw self, picking something up is much easier, so that's what's going on today. I go away on Sunday for a whole month, so I did some panic buying, which I'm going to take you through some of, that's the brand new camera box, what, what got bought, and then we're going to go hit pull at probably what's going to be a very sweaty muscle work, Beckham Green. Alright, what else are we looking at? So, the New Balance order. All my socks are from Nike, and I'm not only wearing Nike socks anymore, so it just feels a bit wrong, do you know what I mean? So. New Balance, white sports socks, and then the little no-show ones. Tie-dye Nike socks, goaded, more shorts. These are actually unisex, you know. Loose fit, above the knee, yeah, decent. Decent. Little double Nike tick, yeah, they look all right, you know. Anyway, it's gonna be a sweaty one. It's very warm in London today. And uh, I'm not, not, not digging the hair also. When I get to the gym, I put the little mic on here, like, like a real influencer. Okay. Let's go pull. First work and set going in. Do handle that pull down. You know the words. Rep range is 8 to 12. Way too many people get way too aroused when they're training. Like, just fucking relax, bro. Why are you shouting and smacking each other before your sex? Chill. Daddy, chill! It's not necessary. You're expending unnecessary energy. No, bro. Go for it. You don't need it, man. Stop shouting. Maybe just shout if you really need to at the bottom of your leg press or probably the uh, end of your hat squat set. Or even maybe a deadlift, but. Shouting before your sets. What do we? No. Describe it is my goals weren't aligned. You know, he's a very, very prestigious coach, now, and uh, I'm not aware of anyone who is not on the same mission as him, which is also to take his athletes to the league. So, totally fair. Absolutely zero bad blood. And uh, I think when prep comes around next time, it'll either be I'll either reach out to John again, see if he'll take me, or I'll speak to Cuba a bit more closely than we are doing at the moment. So he's kind of just on like a consultant. 
it's not on bases at the moment, which is working very well. I'm enjoying doing my own shit with the, um, I guess the second line of the next work's decent. So yeah, anyway, set two. By the way, this is a fucking key bit of information. If you're using wraps, yeah? Your hand goes over and the strap goes under. So you sandwich the bar. It doesn't look the same way it was. The point is when you pull away they get tight. That's a key bit of info. Single arm row next. Typically, this would be done on the. Let me wipe my brow. Typically, at Craven, this would be done on the old uh, Nautilus. But um, obviously, we don't have one here. Um, and also, because of the way training's been this week with leg yesterday, my lower back is a little. <coughs> just a little tender. So, uh, I think what I'm going to do is there's a nice little Jim Aiden machine row that I might give a little spin. It's a nice little all over, all over back smash of this one. Going to get plenty of traction, plenty of traction. Lap dominant, but the upper back will be working as well. I did actually try and film some stuff today because there's been a lot going on. I tried to film earlier when I was at a coffee shop doing a bit of work, but it just wasn't working. I was getting stressed out and flustered, and then I had to jump on a consult call. Um, busy day today. I found out the, the total cost of my broken my broken Porsche. Um, the actual chassis system failure or fault is not that much. Um, it's like a few hundred quid. The parts like 65 quid. The labour is a few hundred quid. Unfortunately, the back tires are completely worn and the brake pads are done. So the total cost of all of it is two and a half thousand pounds. I was like, right, okay. Do the chassis and then we'll address the rest when I'm back. Not great. I'll do it in bits and then I'm going to sell it anyway. Because hopefully, your boy's finally out of this country for good. But more to come on that later on. We have seven minutes to go into another consult. We're going to go see one fit this evening. Uh, I'm going to be with them from like 6 till 8 or something like that. So perhaps I'll take the old camera along. And, and I guess the plan with these little vlogs is the ones that I'm going to self film. There's not going to be any like, you know, cinematic, cinematic master classes, but I'll take you along for my days, little, little roundup of the week, and then a little Friday edit. Bang. Onto the YouTube. How does that sound? <laughs> So 
there we go. That is behind the scenes of the second one fit shoot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with really. with Mr. Andy Hillux. Always fun being in Liverpool Street at eight ten when you've not had any dinner. But there you go. <laughs> it's all going to be worth it in the end when this is a multi-billion dollar company. I'm sure. All right, we made it. I've not really spoken on YouTube about one fit, but basically, I've been working with the guys since September of last year. So almost a year now to basically help them deliver uh, an online coaching software that is much better than the ones out there on the market at the moment, um, which I'm pretty happy with doing. It's, it's obviously a brand new platform. Um, it's kind of in its like beta testing phase at the moment. So there's been, you know, I think a couple of hundred coaches sign up um, and they are kind of going through the the, use, the usage of it now and obviously providing feedback that we can then make changes on and whatnot. Um, I've started to move some of my business over to there um, and like full transparency, it's not ready for prep clients yet, um, but it certainly will be. Um, and I know that it's gonna make my business much more efficient. Um, I'm actually really enjoying it with the clients that I have got on there at the moment. So it's just a case of getting everyone else on there. Um, and I go away next week and the boys are gonna help me migrate a load of clients over. So that's pretty exciting. Go to work. Let's get it. All right. I did. I did my two top sets, as it were, on the uh, the prime seat is half up. So I feel that great to me. Drops off, the man. Which is all good, obviously, with the old, the old length and range bias, but but I do still like that quite deep contraction you can get on cars anyway. Back off set here, 12 to 15, and then length and partial rest board. There's a few reasons my cars aren't growing and neither are yours. Number one, I never trained them. I never used to train them beyond pain. Cars are quite small muscle. And uh, I think they're one that's gonna be susceptible to like transient pain when you're doing your movements, right? So at the end of that set when it's high rep, it's gonna fucking hurt. But that doesn't mean you've reached failure. That's the difference. It might burn and it might be full of blood. But if you can still perform reps, you need to perform reps. You're not actually going to fail, you're just going to pain. Number two, not training them enough. I've trained them more than ever over the last few months. They get hit at least every other session, if not four sessions a week, three sets each time. So that's 12 sets a week at least, um, or between nine and 12 sets a week. And then, uh, and then also just making sure I'm spending loads of time in that length and range. So I'm really pausing in the stretch. I'm really actually contracting out of the stretch rather than just sort of levering myself out of the stretch. So there's a big switch in terms of Okay, so my mic batteries managed to run out of battery twice in one vlog, which is uh, a new high score. Anyway, that meant that there's no sound on any of these clips. So I thought what I'd do is record my first voiceover for training. So here you go, movement after the single arm cable row, three sets of 12 to 15 on the seated lateral raise prime machine. We then come into my heavy high incline press of the week. This kind of alternates between a dumbbell press or a Smith press. If I've got access to a Cybex Smith, I'll do that. If not, dbs it is so here we go aiming for max range of motion here if i can on the good reps I definitely can aiming for at least a little micro pause in that length and range again we know the length and range is where the majority of the growth is happening so trying to spend a little bit of time there only have a real cues here are to drive the elbows across to the midline um, and just try and keep the majority of that bias on the upper chest which is difficult but it can be done next up we got the prime I guess the prime low row, this is probably my favorite bit of prime rowing kit, I think. I think. The reason being, I don't feel like any other bit of kit smashes the upper back quite like this does in such a specific way. So I really, really like this bit of kit. 
Needless to say, we've got it biased in the length and mid-range. So obviously overloading that stretch position, which I'm in now, and then driving back is gonna drop off as we get into that short position. That is really what you wanna do on most bits of Prime kit in most cases. But yeah, really lovely bit of, really lovely bit of kit here. One of my favorites from Prime. And then as I struggle out of that machine and then struggle into a new one, what we've got here is probably my new favorite bicep movement. So there's like a high incline cable curl. Um, someone actually commented on my, I think it was my Instagram a little while ago and said, uh, increase the increase the height of the cables from your starting position and they're absolutely bang on. So what we're trying to do here basically is make sure the shoulder is in kind of hyper extension, I guess, or full extension and also create the biggest moment I'm in that length and range. So right now where my elbow is fully extended um, and my hands are as far down as they can be, we want to make a right angle between our forearm and the cable. So I'm not far off that here. And what that means is going to be again, super high in that stretch length and position. And we know, we know from the data recently that actually biceps are one of the confirmed the muscle groups um, that respond really, really well to overloading that length and range. So that is why this is a very smart thing to do. Um, other things that make this, this uh, movement pretty, particularly good, it drops off in the shorter range where we're going to be weak and obviously we're braced against the bench. There's absolutely no cheating going on here, which is uh, which is solid. Not least the fact that you look sick doing it as well. Very, very good. And then final movement of the day. Very, very straight up bro alternate arm hammer curl. Can't go wrong here. Um, I think this is two sets of eight to ten from memory. Two sets of eight to ten and then it's one set basically rest pause. So we do all the reps on that right arm and then we do all the reps on the left arm. By the time you've done both arms, the first arm is now rested again, you can go again. Um, this is a pretty savage way of doing these to be honest. It gives the arms basically no rest bite between reps. You're going to just do continuous reps until you absolutely cannot move that dumbbell anymore. And then guess what? You don't even get to put the dumbbell down. You have to move on to the other arm. So yeah, fantastic movement. Bit of a bread and butter one for biceps. This is something I've done for a long, long time in my programs, long before I was ever coached. Um, and I attribute quite a lot of arm thickness to this movement. So give that a go. Um, and what you're gonna see next is me posing in absolute silence because there's no mic on. But here we go, this is where we're looking. This is how we're looking currently, or at least how we're looking on the uh, day of recording this video. So not mad about it. I'm not buzzing with the look. It's quite a typical off season look for me bit chubby, bit fluffy, but probably a lot of that in my head. Um, I'm fairly, fairly happy with how we're looking right now, to be honest. And uh, we're gonna push on with this off season. The plan is no longer to be restricting my food, so it's time to grow. And this is gonna be me signing off. If you like this video, drop a like, comment, subscribe, any questions in the, in the questions box, and I'll see you in the next one, peace.